while it was ridiculous enough to, to us to think that this sheet would curve around all by itself, uh, uh, we didn't think that that was likely unless it would just be these hexagons that would be involved. So we knew that these things, if they ever looked, if they ever curved around on themselves, would be very much like a geodesic dome that the American uh, architect Buckminster Fuller invented. Um, so we went over the library, I went over the library, and got a book back on Buckminster Fuller and looked at it, looking for domes uh, that had a lot of hexagons in them, and so to see whether it was possible that, that you could make a dome all the way around with just hexagons. And we did manage to find a picture in this book uh, that uh, looked just like that. You look at the whole thing, it's a, actually a, a building made for the Union Tank Car Company in Baton Rouge, Louisiana in the, in the 50s. Looks like it's all hexagons. And so um, that night I went home uh, deciding that I would spend the, the evening working on my computer trying to make a uh, hexagonal lattice curve around and close on itself. Um, well, after a couple hours of playing with the computer graphics, I decided quickly it was just too hard a problem to do that night on the computer. So I gave up with the computer program and uh, simply got a sheet of paper and cut out some hexagons. Be careful when you use them. Better living for chemistry. I cut out one hexagon and then I cut out a whole bunch of hexagons exactly the same size with equal sides on, uh, on uh, all six of the edges. and uh, put them down on, on, a, on my desk and with scotch tape started pasting around a, a, a hexagons around it. Of course, it takes six hexagons to go around it. Well, anyone who's looked at a bathroom floor that has hexagonal tiles on it knows that what you get when you do that is a flat surface. And I knew that, of course, that that's what you were going to get. And I figured, well, maybe, maybe when, when the carbon atoms really come together, they're not going to be quite so perfect in their bond lengths. One way or another, they'll kind of cheat, and they'll be able to, f to sort of curl around a little bit in this direction. And so I started cheating with the, the paper. Instead of just putting the little paper hexagons right against their edges, I'd overlap the edges a little bit. You know, Nobody was looking, so it was OK if I did it. And I'd scotch tape them in. And I was going pretty good as I got around the hexagon with the third and the fourth hexagon. I was getting sort of a concave looking thing. But by the time I got around to put the sixth hexagon, hexagon in, it was clearly ridiculous. The, the sixth hexagon was already overlapping the first one by so much there was no way to, to really get it to look right. And so even though nobody was looking, even I wasn't going to be able to, to believe that that's the way it happened. So then uh, after I... Um, thought about it a bit, I decided to try a pentagon, as we knew that pentagons sometimes are used in these structures. 
Uh, so who knows, maybe carbon somehow is able to put a pentagon in as it's hooking together to make one of these sheets. And, um, and maybe that will help its cur it curve. So I cut out a pentagon out of paper, being very careful to make sure the side of the pentagon was the same length as the side of the hexagon. And I put the pentagon down on, on the table <clears throat> and brought my hexagons up and started scotch taping to it. Well, even when you put the second hexagon in, it's very clear you don't have to cheat now in order to make it curve. The sheet naturally curves with a pentagon present. And as you attach more hexagons around that central pentagon, you get a very clear sort of salad bowl structure. Well, I didn't know it at the time, but that salad bowl structure that I'd made actually is a known molecule. It's called coranuline. And I think I have a structure of it over here. Here it is. Here's the, the pentagon, right, that I started with. And here are the five now hexagons going around that pentagon. And you notice it, it, it naturally curves it in this direction. Well, in the molecule coranuline, it isn't just carbon, because if you just made this out of carbon, you'd have all these dangling bonds on the edges. And you see these little white balls around here. These are hydrogens. Now, hydrogen only needs to, it only effectively has one hand. It has a valence of one. Uh, so one hydrogen can come on each one of these dangling bonds and make it a happy uh, molecularly bound region of the molecule where this carbon has three bonds to it. There's three nearest neighbors. This hydrogen has one nearest neighbor, which is what it wants. So every atom in this whole structure is happy in the chemical sense. It has all of its bonds that it needs to have fulfilled. So this is a molecule. It's a perfectly happy object. You can take a bunch of these and put them together in a test tube, and shake it up, and they all maintain their identity. Um, but you notice it has this curved structure. Of course, in our apparatus, we didn't have any hydrogen around. In fact, we have a vacuum. It's only carbon. So in the apparatus, these bonds, these atoms are gone. And these edges really do dangle in the apparatus, in reality. And so it's easy to understand that, in fact, if you did have something like this being made spontaneously as the carbon condenses in the apparatus, it would keep on growing. Since it was clear that the Pentagon is the, is the answer to how you curve the sheet, and we knew somehow we'd got to get it to curve all the way around, I quickly cut up a bunch more Pentagons. And now there's a question, where do you add the next Pentagon? Well, I decided that I would, I would add them this in the simplest possible way. Uh, in other words, I would have each pentagon be surrounded with hexagons just like this one was, so all the pentagons would be the same. It's the simplest possible thing. There are a lot of other possibilities. Okay, now what I want you to do is like to get up and do an end zone dance. Bingo. Now, needless to say, my heart got pretty excited at this time because it looked like that not only could you curve the sheet around, but there was a natural tendency for it to perfectly explain the number 60, which otherwise had just popped out of our apparatus 
without any explanation to it whatsoever. So I quickly cut out some more pentagons and put it all together. And by about 2 o'clock in the morning, I managed to put the top pentagon right here on a pentagonal hole and made the first model of the C60 uh, molecule. And now you can see in this, in this beautiful structure, every carbon is happy. It has three atoms around it, three other carbons, which carbon loves to do. In fact, more than that, every carbon is identical to every other one. There's always some rotation that you can rotate this thing through such that one carbon becomes exactly the same as the other one. The whole object looks the same. It has, in fact, the highest symmetry possible for any molecule. This is the roundest, most symmetrical molecule you can make out of anything, anytime. And I was thrilled because, not because this structure uh, is so pretty, it is, certainly is pretty, but because in our apparatus, carbon seemed to have found a way of making this all by itself and explain the specialness of this 60th cluster of carbon. And if this was the explanation, here's a brand new molecule, never uh, before known by chemists or physicists um, on this planet.